Uh, Fontel, I'm just kind of curious your early impressions of the receiver group, uh, things that you think need to be improved, things that, things that you think they've done well so far. Uh, I think the, the thing that we've done the best so far is just compete. Uh, you know, those guys in those room, Caleb is doing an excellent job of being a leader. Uh, he's doing a tremendous job of being the same guy every day. Um, I love him, and we're looking for leadership. Uh, you know, it's my job to develop those guys and, and to help them and to help them learn and to help them be passionate about this sport and passionate about this game because it's not going to give you anything that you haven't worked for. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing for us is uh, we're learning how to compete. Um, they'll, they'll continue to develop and um, they'll continue to uh, see who they are as a person and see who they are as a player. Uh, but competition by far is at the top of our list. I know you're a Richmond guy, so I don't know how far back you go with Jaden Payute, uh, if it predated your time here. How tough of, the, of a decision was that for him, and, and what were those discussions like? Yeah, man, I've uh, actually recruited him when I was at James Madison. Um, but that's a difficult time, you know, for him and for his family. And, uh, you know, that wasn't something that was easy for him. That was a week-long discussion. And, you know, the best thing that I can do for him right now is to support him, uh, is to be there for him, is to love him is to encourage him, is to let him know he can be successful uh, without football. Uh, you know, he doesn't need football to be successful. He doesn't need football to define him, uh, you know, as a man. And he's going to go on. He's going to have a great career. He's going to have a wonderful family and, and, and little ones one day, and he'll be able to run around with them. And um, I think that's the biggest thing for us as coaches is just to continue to be there for him and support him in whatever he needs. Are you a, a receivers coach that likes to rotate every guy at the positions, like on the outside of the slot, or are you kind of right now focusing on getting guys reps at one spot so they can kind of get it down because you're learning a new offense? Kind of what's been your approach this spring? Throw them in the fire, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Throw them in the fire. And I think uh, for me, uh, that's, the, that's the way to do it just because, you know, I don't want to keep them at one spot and handicap them. Uh, I'd rather them know the offense and not know the play, uh, you know. The more you can do, the better. Uh, the, the more valuable you become to this offense, the more valuable you become to this team. Uh, you know, I don't want guys just to say, hey, I'm a slot receiver and this is all I'm going to play. You know, you know, when you get down to game planning and moving guys around, you want to you, you want to be able to put the best guys in the best positions. You know, that's going to be helping them be successful. Uh, but just right now, from a learning standpoint, uh, I want those guys to be able to know the play and know the concept and just not know a position. And the transfers, how have they acclimated J uh, Jaden Blue and, and Stephen Gosnell? What have you kind of seen from them so far uh, this spring? Man, I'll tell you what, Jaden Blue may be the, the most resilient kid I've ever been around. Uh, he is truly a tremendous young man. Um, just the tragedy that he's been through and to be able to deal with it and handle it with such grace uh, and to be able to talk about it, uh, and I think that's – that's super important, and I, I can't sit here and say that I could be the same person that he is right now. But, uh, you know, he's been awesome. Uh, he's been an awesome mentor for a lot of those young guys in the room. Uh, he's been an awesome leader. Um, he's showing guys how to practice because uh, I think that's the big thing. You know, it's a lot of young guys in that room that haven't played. Uh, they're freshmen. They still have a lot of development to go. Uh, so, so I'm leaning on Jaden. I'm, I'm leaning on Caleb uh, to show these guys the right way and how to do it. You mentioned Caleb. Obviously, he's a Richmond guy, just like yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. But, but he's kind of the one veteran of the group that's been here a while. What has stood out to you about just – you mentioned him taking on a leadership role. What's kind of stood out to you about him and, and just uh, his game and where he's improved so much so as far as you've been here? He's consistent. Uh, he's the same guy every day. And in, in, this, in this sport, I think that's, that's all you can ask for is consistency. Uh, we know who he, who he is as a person. We know who he is on the field. We know who he is off the field. Uh, he commands the leadership role. Uh, he doesn't speak a lot, uh, but, but when he does, those guys listen to him. Uh, and I think that's important for him, and uh, I think that's some, you know, important for the guys around him. They rally behind him. They listen to him. And like I said, he's, it's a lot to be said about a kid that can be the same guy every day because – you know, truth be told, they go through a lot of stuff. I mean, they got class, they got, you know, social life, they got family problems. They, it's a lot of stuff going on outside. So when he's in this building, you would never know. Uh, you would never know. And, um, you know, that's, that's huge for us and, 
you know, for an offense and, and definitely for that room. There are a lot of young guys, like redshirt freshmen, that have not have a year under their belt, but but haven't fully you know had a chance to play a lot of, of minutes. What what have those guys like Christian and Keely and, and Dallin? What have you seen from them so far this spring? Seen progress. Uh, I, I tell them all the time: progress, not perfection. Um, I'm not seeking for per uh, perfection, but I am seeking for everybody to make progress and everybody to get better and everybody to continue to develop. I thought Dalen had a a solid week. Um, he had a really good day um, early in the week, and I challenged him immediately after practice. I said, now listen, it's, it's, I want to see what you do the next practice. Uh, this one is done. This one is over with. I want to see what you do the next practice. And Christian is super talented kid, super talented. has all the skills and ability to play at this level and to play in this conference, and he's just got to get an opportunity. And I think that's what it is with a lot of those guys. Uh, yeah, we can label them as unproven. Uh, but they haven't gotten an opportunity to prove themselves, and they're going to get that this spring and this fall. With the two transfer quarterbacks coming in, how have you seen them kind of develop or start to develop the chemistry uh, with the guys in your room? I think it's coming. Um, those guys do a really good job before practice and after practice making sure if we need to get, catch up a couple extra passes or if it was a concept or a route that they felt like that they didn't connect on that they want to get an extra rep at. Uh, I think they're both different in, they own, in their own ways. Uh, super kids, uh, both great leaders, uh, both established. Uh, but you know those guys, those guys respond to either one of those guys that are back there. And I, you know we, we've been doing this long enough. You, you're gonna need a couple good players at that position uh, to win some football games. And then Coach Pry mentioned that Connor Blumerick is is gonna you know move around a little bit, catch some passes and whatnot. What do you see out of him that, that you think could make him successful in that role? Man, I love it. I love it. Um, he brings a different aspect to the room uh, with the quarterback mentality. He has tremendous ball skills, and he can run. Um, and I think those are, you know, one of the top two things, uh, qualities of a receiver that you would like when you're recruiting them. Uh, you want to be able to run and, you know, catch the ball. And I think he can do that, and he's going to offer versatility for us. And, He's going to be, be able to do a lot of things offensively. So I'm super excited uh, to work with him. He's buying in. Uh, he's got a great attitude. Uh, and I think the guys in the room were excited to have him in there. Anything else? With uh, Kelly Lawson, uh, obviously a guy that kind of stands above, <laughs> literally yeah. above everybody. Uh, hard not to notice him at practice. Where is he at in his development uh, at your at receiver? Um, well, Kelly is a guy who's super raw and so, so talented, um, long, athletic. You know, like I mentioned, Wakana just has all those attributes to be a really good player, and I think he'll offer a lot of value for us, uh, you know, wherever, he decide, wherever we decide to play him at. Let's go to Zoom. Tim. Coach, uh, what have you seen from guys like Daywan Lofton and Jalen Jones? We know after a guy's freshman season, that next off season can be big for their development and growth after getting some experience. What have you seen from those guys? Um, Lofton is probably the most confident kid I have in the room. Um, and I think that's, to him, is that's just who he is. That's just who he is as a person. That's just who he is as a player. He's confident in his abilities. Um, he's versatile. Uh, I think he's going to offer a lot for us with the offense. I can move him around. Uh, he doesn't flinch. I think he can run the route tree. Uh, he catches the ball really well. And, you know, more than anything, he's a pleasure to coach. Um, just doing extra, um, staying late, being early. Um, yes, sir, no, sir. Just a super coachable kid uh, that has a bright future. Uh, Jalen, uh, very familiar with Jalen with my time. I actually recruited him when I was at East Carolina. Um, strong, physical. Um, another confident kid that just, you know, trying to find out who he is as a player. Um, but he offers us a lot of versatility because he can move around in our offense. He can he can carry the ball in our offense. He can return kicks. Um, you know, I, I expect all those guys to be dominant on special teams. I mean, it's the saying just be special on special teams because um, I think that's big, and I think that's going to offer them some confidence as well, and that's going to translate offensively. And then, Coach, um, I know you're primarily recruiting a lot in terms of Richmond and the 7572 areas that historically Virginia Tech has been strong in but has struggled of late. What is it going to take to get Virginia Tech reasserted 
in those areas, especially now when you have so many teams from across the country recruiting those areas. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm labeled as the guy that recruits those areas, but I think we're doing a heck of a job of tag teaming and team effort and staff effort. And, you know, it's going to take us all to answer your question. It's going to take the whole staff. It's going to take the program. It's going to take, you know, kids in that area. Um, but it's, it's going to take everybody. Um, it's going to take everybody. And we'll get there. Virginia Tech, uh, in the last couple of years, hasn't had like the depth or the confidence to kind of run a lot of three receiver sets. So, you know, that a lot, of, a lot of splitting tight ends out or using running backs in the slot, but kind of have avoided uh, using three receivers at the same. As you, as a receivers coach, do you want to this team to be able to rely on that, even though it's not maybe a huge feature of the offense? Like, is it important to you to be like, we have to have confidence that in that package, even if we are going to be a tight and heavy team? Is that something that? Like philosophically, you think like at the other day, like we need to have that look ready. Like I mean, because it's not been something that they've used here, kind of in recent history. Um, you know, personally, I think I, I want the best guys on the field. That's going to give us the best opportunity to win. You know, honestly, um, when I was at Old Dominion last year, we we played a good about sixty percent of our games with two tight ends on the field. Uh, you know, we're able to win some games. So um, whoever those eleven guys are, those guys are going to play. Uh, and they're going to give us the best chance to win.